Hi everyone, I'm Toby Israel, the Mundo Storyteller, and joining us right now is Sarah Wu. She's a really awesome member of the Numundo Global Tribe. She's an herbalist, co-founder of Envision Festival, co-founder of the Village Witches Project, and she's going to be hanging out with us in Cosmic Convergence Festival in Guatemala in a couple weeks and sharing some really interesting workshops after the festival as well. Thank you, Sarah, for joining us. Thank you, Toby, for having me. <laughs> so before we get into talking about the origins of herbalism, I'd love for you to share about your morning mate herbal mix. <laughs> yeah, so one of my favorite ways to consume herbs um, is in, you know, loose leaf form, dried form. I do really well with tea. And so I drink mate, uh, yerba mate, which is you know, native to uh, Paraguay originally. It's a national drink of Argentina and Chile and everything. Um, but what I add to mine, because mate is this amazing cerebral stimulant and a digestive bitter, but what I put in mine are nervines. So I have in here lemon balm and tulsi and rose and skullcap mm. and damiana and peppermint. So it's a supercharged mate <laughs> that I take every morning. So delicious. Amazing. And would it be fair to say that a lot of your work is about sort of reconnecting with our roots in terms of our connection to plants and herbs and how humans have always connected with herbs? Yeah, you know, it's, um, we're in a great time of disconnect. And I think a lot of people are seeking ways to reconnect, whether it's to themselves or their communities or to the planet. Um, and it's really only been over the past few hundred years that we've disconnected ourselves so strongly. And a lot of my work, especially with the Village Witches Project, is bringing people back into uh, what we could say is like their, their indigenous selves. You know, we all come from somewhere and are indigenous to somewhere originally. And for those of us who have kind of mixed backgrounds, like myself, it's really hard to have an identity of some kind, um, whether it's to place or to cultural heritage or whatever. And I think a lot of people who come from uh, North America also feel that loss of identity. And for me, in reconnecting to our original selves has been through plants, because the plants have always been tapped into source. And, um, and, and we can learn a lot from them. And so, yeah, uh, medicinal plants and working with herbalism in particular, which is plants and mushrooms, or just call it herbalism, uh, it came at a pretty young age and helped me to really find myself and find an identity for myself mm -hmm. as an herbalist and has also united me with a community that's global, which has been a really beautiful experience. Can you speak a little bit to what that original connection to plants looked like for humans? For myself? Or for, for, hum oh, for, for humans. Human beings. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, you know, it's like when you, I love thinking about the, the story of our planet Earth because, you know, when we think about our, our space existence, you know, it's like 13 billion years old. Our planet Earth is, what, like four or five, something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But, you know, for millions and millions of years, our planet Earth was a kind of scary place. You know, it was volcanic. It was filled with, you know, methane gas and CO2 and the volcanic kind of activity. And it was really this big, hot kind of rock. Um, kind of like what Venus looks like now, actually. And um, plants came out of the oceans about 700 million years ago. And so when you just even think about that scope of time, it's, it's pretty crazy. But as they started coming out of the oceans, uh, they, you know, lived and died and evolved over millions and millions of years. And through that process, they consumed the CO2 in the air and they released oxygen. And so they actually created the environment that we have today, which is... I think a lot of people don't realize that we have to give thanks to the plants and then we do stupid things like cut down forests and you know monocrop thousands of acres of land what we're what we're doing is we're destroying not just you know the atmosphere and the soil and everything but it's really life itself and so human beings homo sapiens what we are right now you know we're only two million years old and so you think about like that scope of time between 700 million years ago and 2 million years ago when plants transformed the planet into what we have today. Mm -hmm. And so human beings, when we came into existence, you know, it was this co-evolution with 
the natural environment around us, which included our relationship with plants, whether they were the plants that we were taking as food, what we were using for our shelter, what we were using to protect ourselves, like with whatever, you know, crude clothing that we were wearing to, you know, how we were healing ourselves or transitioning ourselves through different periods of our lives, whether it was through, you know, the beginning of the menstrual cycle, through childbirth and, and through death. You know, plants have been there for us in every aspect of our existence. And we've created, you know, in the past few hundred years since pretty much the industrial revolution and before that with, with the witch trials in uh, most of most of Europe, um, we disconnected from the plants because the plants took us straight to source and what the political systems of the time said was that we needed an intermediary mm. or someone like a priest or something like that you know and so the plants were actually seen as evil and took us we were taken out of our relationship with the plants because um you know what what the political and religious systems at the time said was that you know, that, that is evil and that's the work of the devil because you know you need us and our magic mm. you know, to to bring you health and healing and um, and, and what that did is it took healing and, and uh, sovereignty out of the hands of the individual, where the individual had always had a relationship with plants in their bioregion. You know, they might not have been the healer of their bioregion, but they definitely knew how to treat themselves and their families with what was right around them, within their backyards or in their farms or in their woods. Can you give a couple examples of, if you know of specific plants that would have supported humans medicinally? before that disconnect? Oh God, there's so many. I mean, it's really <laughs> bioregionally based, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I mean, from like the simple foods, like our, our green vegetables, you know, we were seasonal eaters for the majority of our existence. Uh, now we can ship foods in from faraway places and eat strawberries and watermelon in winter time um, from, you know, apples from Argentina or from New Zealand at whatever time of the year. and but it wasn't like that for a very long time and so examples of plants is kind of hard because it again it really goes back into your your individual bioregion you know so where did you grow up Toby? I grew up in Boston. In Northeast. Boston. Okay so for you up there you know some of your native plants would have been like your native rhubarbs or your native um, chickweeds. There's a lot of things that came around with you know, the settlers, the colonists, which really transformed, especially your area of the world, because that was kind of the first contact in many ways. And so they brought with them a lot of the, the plants from uh, Western Europe, which, you know, now we, we see as natives, things like plantain or um, uh, burdock, mm -hmm. but there's, so those would have been some of the plants that people would have known, but then some of the other ones that people would have known in, in those bioregions, you know, would have been things like witch hazel and um, some other nice food up there was um, spice bush, which is a really common one that the native peoples used in the in the Northeast. And so, yeah, <laughs> I grew up in a relative bioregion and from upstate New York, you know, and then and so it's just it's it's very dependent, you mm -hmm. know, on what the native fruits and foods and those kinds of things were. I guess up by by you and I where we grew up would also have been like. Um, chestnuts and mm. walnuts and uh what are some of the other ones up there not hazelnuts yeah those are those are broke there too um and then some of our our native corn actually you know corns mm -hmm. are from the americas as well like those were uh brought back to europe same things with like uh, tomatoes and potatoes and our root vegetables what's the effect of this is a huge question, but if you could speak to the effect of globalization in terms of we are shipping food and plants and produce internationally year round that we aren't, most of us aren't eating seasonally anymore. What are some of the effects of that for the human body or for, for the landscape? Oh, I, I think it's huge. You know, without, with um, non-seasonal eating, it's one of the first things that I always recommend to people when they ask, like, what are the steps that I can take, you know, to be more environmental or more uh regenerative i don't even use the word sustainable anymore mm -hmm. um because to me it's the base minimum so yeah and doing the the least that we can you know and as a permaculture please regenerative so people are always asking like what can i do then this is also daunting it, it feels so heavy and the first thing i would say is start to eat with your bioregion like, try to eat seasonal it, it is hard like i ate fully bioregional for about like, one year i was living in philadelphia and it 
you know, I ate squash for months, <laughs> which was how it was, though, for a long, long time for us. Now I'm really blessed to live in Costa Rica and have abundant fresh food all year round of many different kinds. But, um, you know, so with bioregional eating and living with the seasons, especially if you're in uh, a place where it gets like four, four seasons where you go into deep winter, some of the effects of eating raw food in the winter time is it actually is going to make you colder you're going to be less resilient mm. to um cold and flu and to you know what what we would do in the winter time is we would actually accumulate more body fat which would give us sustenance through winter time now we're in varying kinds of temperature controlled spaces artificial lighting we're not going into the deep winters like we used to mm. anymore right now it's what are we we're in december and so you're in costa rica again it's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, but for people who are watching this who live in the north, you know, I would really focus on things like warming foods, like, like squash and your root vegetables and trying to avoid raw foods as much as you can. And you will be more resilient through through the winter time. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the other effects of non-seasonal eating is that we're it just it's a disconnect is that we think that we can just go to the supermarket at any time and get whatever we want. And, and we can do that. But when we look at you know climate change and environmental collapse and economic collapse and unstable governments, it's like if we don't know exactly where our food's coming from, then we're going to suffer. And one of the things that you can do is getting to know the food in your bioregion by just starting to learn the wild plants that are around and mm -hmm. what is abundant through the seasons. Because we have to remember that animals survive through deep winters and through all the seasons and they know where to get their food and so for people if you can take like a foraging class or take like a just doing plant walks within your bioregion is a really great way to start to reconnect with what's happening immediately around you mm -hmm. and it is really fun to learn planetary medicine and learn about plants from all over the world whether it's ayurveda or traditional Chinese medicine or plants from latin america south america or Africa or the Aboriginal plants of Australia. It's like we can learn plants from everywhere. And that's one of the amazing things about our current uh, system is that you and I are talking this way even right now, mm -hmm. um, is that we have access to a lot of information, but it, it starts at home, you know? So just mm -hmm. getting outside into your yards, into your, into your local forests, into your park, and learning to identify the plants. Great. I know there's so much more to say about this and we might have to do a part two. <laughs> down the road, but I want to make sure you have a chance to talk about your upcoming workshop on Lake Atitlan. Yeah, so post-cosmic, um, we're going to be doing the wisdom of the plants and mushrooms. And so it's going to be a three-day uh, workshop by my friend, myself and my friend Lala Palmieri, who is Guatemalan um, from the city. And she's a biologist and a botanist and an herbalist. And we'll be running the herbal clinic at mm -hmm. Cosmic Convergence. And then afterwards, um, this workshop, we're gonna be focusing on, you know, like an introduction to the medicinal plants and mushrooms, uh, where they come from, learning a little bit about their biology, a little bit about their biochemistry, how to prepare them. Um, the second day, we're gonna be focusing on um, affordability and how can we integrate medicinal plants and mushrooms into your lifestyle in a way that's accessible. It's sometimes for people, it, it can be a little um, out of reach because the cost of tinctures, the cost of pills, shipping, those kinds of things. But when you get to know your bioregion and you get to know, you know what, what is uh, available to you locally is how you can really integrate and, and learning how to prepare them yourself mm -hmm. is a way that you can integrate them in an affordable way. And then uh, the third day of the workshop, we're gonna be focusing on the traveler's med kit. And so how can you care for yourself when you're on the road and um, um, by water and plane and all of that, because a lot of the people coming to Cosmic for travelers and hanging around, you know, San Marcos, where it will be, it's also a very nomadic mm -hmm. location. And so um, getting people aware of what are called analogs. And so say you know a plant for pain that and you don't have access to it, it's like, okay, well, what can I find within this new area and, and learning about, you know, the constituents of the plants and, mm -hmm. and so how you can find whatever you need wherever you are and what are the most necessary things for you when you're on the road. That would be a really fun workshop. Amazing. So yeah. if that's resonating, the link to that is in the description of this video. It's January 3rd to 5th. Should, if you're coming to Cosmic Convergence, you should also drop by the herbal clinic and meet Sarah and Lala. 
or come by the journey portal where they'll be giving some amazing workshops on herbalism. Yeah. Sarah, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Toby. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Have a great day. <laughs> You're so pretty. <laughs>